September 16th. And I put this on a WeChat, you guys. It's at the Ontario Double Tree. Okay, look. You can walk there. Okay. Everybody needs to be there. No, I don't want it. We shouldn't hear. Oh, it's too far. Um, it's in our backyard. It's in our own backyard. If you need, take an Uber if you need to. We got some folks that can assist you with all that too. But double tree, you guys, right in our own backyard. We want to have the biggest presence. We're not even hosting it. It's in our own backyard, right? CBC. So Guillermo's hosting this. We got to have a big representation, guys. Brand new agents, agents that haven't been here in a while. We got to get them to this meeting. Okay, um, and this is, we're almost at the end because we're not having a Momentum Monday in December, so we probably only have two or three left, okay? So we want to have a big representation and uh, we're going to be going over the, the uh, July and August numbers and stuff like that. So make sure we're there. Everybody's going to be at Momentum Monday. Yes. In Ontario, <laughs> we will pick you up, okay? Who's committed that's going to be there? We gonna, that right there? Okay. Took another picture with my family. Mm -hmm. All right, right, you guys. Are you gonna write them on the board like we always do? Yeah, you know what? Let's we're going to someone assist me with that. Thank you, Nisi. Pretty much everybody. Because I'm, I would be upset if nobody here around here. It takes a lot to piss me off. <laughs> but if, if we, I understand if you have work or whatnot, but adjust your schedule. But uh, this is important. That's your business. This is your business. We want you to win. We want you to be the top at your level. Who's getting get promoted this month, by the way? Is Chris? By the end of September, who's getting promoted? So we're gonna have no training associates, associates in here by the end of September, right? No. Sir. Oh. Is Mike? Senior Sir. Mike? Okay. And? Senior Associate. Yeah, come on. And if you have teammates that aren't here, right, you want to get them to this meeting also. <clears throat> if you can leave work a little bit early, it's from 9 to 1. Actually, I'm sorry, 10 to 1. 10 to 1. If you're not in SMB, it's from 10 to 1. It's not the quarterly meeting, right? No. Yes, everybody's going. We will look. I know San Diego brings a bus, but we can get a bus. <laughs> 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 go down the streets. All right. Okay. Again, if you have teammates that aren't here, reach out to them and make sure you get them there. Uh, again, it's a big deal. Double Tree, um, Double Tree, Ontario. All right, you guys ready? Yes. yes. That was kind of weak. Y'all ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Bringing up this young lady here. Um, she's kicking some butt. I'm oh, sorry, not not her first. Bring up this guy. He's kicking some butt. Um, super fired up. This guy, you know, really appreciate him. He he trains a, a, a trains the trainers. And uh, he brings value every single time. I mean, his last training was awesome. But I hope you guys got some value from that. Yes. We got some some tidbits this morning. Uh, so you give it up for Mr. Matt Chain. Yes. before the money comes and here's the reason being is because money and this is, a, this is um, something that I heard uh, I read out of one of Grant Cardone's books <coughs> is money is only attracted to those who give it attention You guys probably saw this picture probably about maybe two months ago. 
on my social media, that's my entire world in one picture. Okay, my wife and my son. Okay. Now you have to remember, and I was just talking to Anissa about this, and I talked to a few other people about this, is even Alondra very briefly. A lot of people think you're crazy for doing WFG, <coughs> don't they? Yes. Yeah. Okay, remember, we are rich, normal, poor. That's right. Always remember that. And remember, it's always the weird people in this world that actually dominate this world, bar none. Think of it this way. People told Steve Jobs he was crazy to start Apple. Crazy to start Apple. He even got fired from his own company, and when the company started floundering, what'd they do? They rehired him. So he wasn't crazy, was he? In a sense, right? Even people like Mark Zuckerberg, who told him that you know his social <laughs> network, right? That's the movie too. That it wouldn't work; it would fail, right? But these people, and it's going to get to my my quick 10, 15 minute talk before I bring up Anissa, and this actually ties into her talk and uh, about my home, is you have to have a certain vision of what you want your life to look like, okay? And something that we tell you guys to do is. You know, we tell you guys to write down your goals, what you want your vision to be. This is my vision board. Remember, you guys heard me talk about this a little bit on Tuesday. You look at your phone or your tablet or your computer 4,000 times a day, believe it or not. Most people are like, what, really? Even that quick to look at the time? You might not think of it that way, but it's true. So I'm staring at this every single day. So one of the things that I'm looking at is getting a new E-Class, right? It's either an E-Class or a Tesla, one of the two. I'm getting more leaning toward E-Class. Getting my ring, being Nick's MVP. I already did it for last year up to convention, finally doing it to Wealth Bowl, unless somebody else can prove me wrong. Right, we had a few other people, right? That said, no, I'll catch Matt, they're not even here. Right, 50 grand cash save, Hawaii, right? So the question is, it's really what's your vision for your life? And in a corporate world, they don't talk about this, do they? No. In a corporate world, they just want you to show up, clock in, do your job, clock out, you get your paycheck, do it for 30 or 40 years, and hopefully you can retire. If you save invested money, or if, you have a pen, if you're lucky enough to have a pension through like the state or the federal government, you're lucky, right? But unless you actually have a vision of what you want, Right? You're not gonna get it. T, T. Harbecker says that all the time. The reason why people don't get what they want is because they don't know exactly what they want. As dumb as that sounds, it's totally true. And people look at me funny when I say that to them when I'm having normal conversations. The reason why you don't you don't you don't have what you want is because you don't know what you want. And I'm like, well, what do you mean that? I was like, did you ever envision your life being this way? They're like, no, I just went with the flow. Case in point. Right? I never wanted to be a financial professional, yet I'm here. Does that make sense? Yes. But it's the WFG vehicle that's gonna help me get me to where I want to go, right? Okay, so I'm gonna do something really quick with you guys, okay? Everybody put everything down, hands free. <clears throat> nothing in your hands, nothing to distract you, no nothing, I can wait. <clears throat> okay, I want everybody to close your eyes. Okay. Think about where you're at right now. Okay, and you say this completely to yourself, think in your head. Are you completely satisfied with where you're at? Okay, like I said, don't, don't answer out loud. Because there is a reason why you're here. There's a reason why you see something in WFG that will take you to somewhere you want to go, but we have to clarify where you want to go. Hey, what I want you to do is start thinking about where you're going to be before 2020. So coming into Wealth Bowl, where will you be? Will you have hit your first promotion as an associate? Will you be a senior associate? Will you be an MD? We be an MD with your watch. We be an MD with your ring. We be SMD with the ring. 
Where will you be in the next three months leading up to Whirlpool? Okay. Now, I also want you to imagine this. Imagine, and I'm talking from personal experience as well, imagine walking that stage in front of 2,000 people <clears throat> being recognized for hitting one of your promotions or a milestone in WFG. Okay. Makes you feel pretty damn good, doesn't it? Now, think about where you want to be in the next five years. Okay. I'll be 40. So I'll tell you guys my vision. By the time I'm 40, I'll be a CEO passively making at least half a million dollars in WFG. That's my vision. Okay, so where will you be in five years? Really think about that. Imagine in five years, let's say you're a CEO in WFG, minimum. Make about half a million a year. Okay. How does your family view you? How do your friends view you? What influence do you have on your local community and your friends and your family? <clears throat> How differently are you treated because you've made such an impact on so many people? Right? If you're married, if you have kids, how does your spouse look at you? How do your kids <coughs> look at you? <coughs> they should be looking at you like you're their hero. Okay? Now open your eyes. How does it make you feel knowing that you can see what your future will look like? There's, um, I forget who says it, is if you have a vision for what you want your life to look like, it's just a matter of time before it happens. Because if you can actually dream it, you can vision it, you can actually make it happen. It's just whether or not you're gonna stay the course to make it happen. You know, the challenge for most people is they hit one little road bump. They hit a roadblock. Right? Somebody told them no. <coughs> Somebody said, I'll get started next week. Somebody says, give me six months, give me a year. Right? Somebody says, you're stupid, you're crazy, whatever. That's <coughs> this in your timeline. Does that make sense? Every little obstacle you face in your life is just making sure that vision you have for yourself and for your life and for your family is worth it, right? Like, you guys would agree, everybody's got something going on, right? We just don't let it be known very publicly, right? Everybody's got, every, you know, excuse my French, everybody got, we got crap going on. Everybody does, right? There are people that are going through a divorce or a separation from their kids. There are a lot worse things out there in this world that are going on. There really are. But as long as you keep that vision for yourself and you're working diligently toward what you're trying to accomplish and what you want to do, it doesn't matter, right? And like I said before, people call you crazy, people call you weird, right? They'll call you a bunch <coughs> of different things. <coughs> but here's the thing is, that's more of a reflection on their own personal identity than it is on you. Don't let someone's opinion of you deter you from the identity that you're building for yourself and the vision of where you're going. You know, Ed Milet talks about in all of his CDs, and it's a, it's a passage out of the, uh, out of the Bible, with, without vision, what does he say? Without um, vision, the man shall perish. Yeah. Yeah. Without vision, man shall perish, right? There's always a vision. It's a matter of what your vision is gonna be, right? Whether you're in your teens, you're 19, 20, in your mid-20s, you're in your 30s, you're in your 40s, your 50s, or your 60s. Man, I see people come in in their 60s, freaking kill it, and go, meet, uh, go make half a million dollars a year in the next three to four years. Tita Lazan, perfect example. Mm -hmm. Under Paul and Mary Meyerton, Ian Dan Charlie's team. She worked as a nurse 
at Kaiser for 30 years, retired with their pension. Her pension, I think, if I remember correctly from the conversation I had with her, was paying her about a quarter million dollars a year. Yeah, I mean, she saved a bunch of money. She's a nurse, right? But passively in WFGE, she's making half a million a year. By the way, in her entire career, she's probably only written five apps her entire career. <laughs> All she did was build a team. She just referred it to her nephew, Paul Ireton, and he did all the building for her. Right, but she just, she knew she had a bigger vision than just being a retired nurse. Right? Look at Eric Olson, perfect example. Wondra, you're 19, right? Eric Olson got started when he was 19 years old. Captain of San Jose football team, working at the San Jose airport. Now he's 36, making $5 million a year. He just stuck to his vision. Your visions and your dreams are real, guys. You just can't let all... Can I, can I just say it? Let's say it. Okay. Don't let all the bullshit out in the world bug you. That's all it is. It's a bunch of BS that you have to deal with with people. Right? Now, keep in mind, your friends and your family, they love you, and the only reason why they say those things to you is because they think they're protecting you. But in all reality, they're not. <coughs> they just don't want to see you get ahead of them. That's why your vision and what you see for yourself has to be crystal clear, right? And also with, um, when we go up to Monty Holmes Ranch here soon, you guys, if you haven't read the book, Expect to Win, get it. It's about 20 bucks on his website, if I remember right. Um, he always talks about start with the end in mind. Now granted, in the next five years, do you think I'm really gonna stay at a studio <coughs> making half a million dollars a year in WFG? No, I got bigger goals, I got bigger plans, but that's at least in the next five years. You know, I sit down with people doing an interview, I look at the next five to 10 years some people are like, man, I don't even think that far. That's the reason why you're here, but we could get you here a lot faster, right? But I'm looking at the next 10 years, like, all right, I'll be 45, SCDC, about a million and a half, and then I'll probably think about really retiring from WFG. Because by then, my son will be uh, 11 years old. Anybody who's got kids? You remember when they were about five to 10 to 11 years old, right? Andrew, I don't think your kids are that old yet. My kids are 19, 27. Oh my God, you don't even look that old. No, no, right? But let me ask you, you guys remember when your kids were growing up, right? Like right now, because of WG, I cherish every single second I spend with my son, because I can. I dropped him off this morning at my parents, right? But I'll, I'll end with this, guys. <clears throat> don't worry about what people think about you. Don't worry about all the BS that they tell you that it doesn't work, it's not going to change, da 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 right? You know what will really boost your confidence you never really listen to those people? It's one word, or actually two words. And Ed Milet just tweeted out not too long ago. Two words. You have to freaking outwork everybody you know. Not only in just this office, but also in the hierarchy. You know how you stand out in the hierarchy? You outwork everybody. Like, I'm mad that two part, a married couple part-timers freaking smashed me last month. They did 68,000 personal points. Part-time. Their MDs, you know how much I paid them? Just so you guys know, $33,000 in one freaking month. What most people make in a year, they did in a month. And all I did was outwork everybody. That's it. So if you learn how to outwork people, by the way, you know, you guys that are part-time, you should be coming into the office and making phone calls. And if you're not making phone calls, you should be out prospecting. If you're not prospecting, you should be on employments. If you're not on employments, it's just a cycle all over again. Calls, prospecting, employment. That's it. There's no secret to it, right? And the only reason why they beat me, they outwork me. And yeah, they probably got a better market, but that should be no excuse for me that I can't go catch them. Right? So keep those things in mind. Just keep your vision clear in front of you. And one other suggestion, write down your goals every single, write down, if you have a notebook, 
Write down your goals every single morning you get up. Thank you. And read your business plan every single morning and at night before you go to bed. Because that will actually reinforce your vision and your reticular activator that Ed Milet talks about will start attracting things into your life. Does that make sense? Like when you start working with certain people, then you start attracting more people. If you always keep your dreams in front of you, your goals and your vision, nobody can stop you. The only person that will stop you is you, right? So with that being said, right, bring up this young lady. She, you know, I'm so blessed to have her part of the team. She makes the team better. And the one thing, I've known Nick for a very, very long time. And he's a lot happier now. He smiles a lot more than he used to. Right? Yeah. And it's all because of this young lady. Please give it up for our CEO, better half, Anissa Amesqua.
I'm here because Cheyenne did nothing for a year and then decided to do something and happened to recruit me. And then like, and nobody actually knew each other. It was like, oh, I know your grandparents or I know a friend of a friend. And when we talk about your war market, none of us actually came from a war market. Saeed came from, uh, lived across the street from Sharif. Like they didn't know each other. They just happened to run into each other. Oh, hey, what do you do? Like, but so many things had to happen for this opportunity to get to you. So while we sit here and sell the dream and it's like, hey, yeah, this is great and wonderful and everything in between, Destiny did its part. Destiny gave the opportunity to you. So somebody prays for a cake and the universe gives you the batter, the oil, the pan, the oven. The did sprinkles. You see that? Yeah. The sprinkles, mm -hmm. the frosting. And then you get frustrated because it didn't give you a cake and you walk out of the kitchen. Hmm. It gave you everything you needed. It's just how bad do you want it? Are you going to make the cake now? Um, and let's be real, it's time to get this team back to, not back to its level because we're still the biggest super team. Like I don't, a lot of people here are new so you don't understand how big Nick has built this. Like. So you're in the base shop, senior broker, EMB, CEO, EVC, right? So you go to Momentum Monday and you see Nick's the CEO, JR's the CEO. Uh, Eric Jimalita. Eric Jimalita's the CEO. But realize, Nick is a CEO with a CEO. Like, nobody <coughs> can touch that. Nick has been on top for his entire career. Nick was the 11 time MVP. Um, and then I think JR got it and then he stole it back and it was a competition. So it's time to steal it back. Nick has done his part in building this as quickly and as big as he could, right? So what comes from that is now somebody needs to poke their head up from the crowd and say, I wanna be mentored, I wanna fill those shoes. So he can't, he's a builder. Like you can be a personal producer and make maybe a million dollars a year every once in a while, maybe $500,000 a year. I mean, but you have to be an extraordinary personal producer. And the moment you stop, it sucks. Like you have residuals, but the team is gone. I mean, that's it. So, I mean, we're looking for the people who are, <coughs> who are gonna stick their heads up and say, it's my turn. I wanna make something of myself. <coughs> um, and that's really what today's, what is it? Today's VP is about. So what was the name of the office for Crystal Green? Monte Home. Home. M O N T E Home H O L M. Okay, so basically this is the sniper's advantage. So you have a predetermined outcome and fully prepared to hit the target. You have your target. If you're a sniper, you have to have a steady hand, steady breath, and pull the trigger without jerking the gun. Now you add the scope to it, it increases your aim. Then you sync the rifle and the high powered scope on a tripod and you have a whole new level of precision. That's what this business plan is. So I want you guys to write down what is a winner to you? Your personal definition of a winner.
So your definition of a winner, does it, this definition apply to you? And if not, what are you doing to make, how are you doing everything possible to live up to your own definition? So I'm gonna show you the pipeline. Okay. So the second question is, what do you want gushing out of your pipeline? So in this picture, he has happiness, joy, peace, wealth. Um, you can put anything at the end of this. I wanna be a good husband and father. I wanna be a, um, I wanna be a CEO, like how uh, Matt was saying. I wanna be a CEO making $500,000 a year. Whatever the end game is, you work this backwards. So to have happiness, joy, peace, wealth, whatever you put at the end of it, you have to have self-respect. Without the self-respect, you'll lack self-respect and that's no confidence, right? Self-discipline is what gets you to self-respect. Without self-discipline, you have errors in judgment. If you don't have desire, you have apathy. If you don't have clearly defined dreams and goals, you lack focus. If you don't have a vision, you lack clarity. And if you don't have faith, you have doubt and fear. So we're gonna work this backwards and there's exercises in each of these. So at the end of this, when you put it back forwards, you know what you have to faith in, what your vision is, your dreams and goals, what you desire, what you have to do to attain this goal and how to have self-respect for yourself. So self-respect is self-image, self-esteem, self-confidence. You like yourself, you're comfortable in your own skin. This is how you live versus how you think you should live. The choices you make versus your own conscious mentality. So that's being able to stand there and say, I have the highest level of confidence in everything that I do. I don't just hope that I will be successful, I know that I'm going to be. I'm worthy of attaining my goals and dreams. I am firm in my belief and confident in my ability to inspire others and myself. And I see myself as a positive force of good in the world. So, I think you're gonna have to look that way. So, I want you to put one circle in the middle. So this is you. And then you put the things that make you up. So if that's being a son or a daughter, a husband or a wife, um, a brother or sister, a leader, a mentor, um, a business person, whatever you say makes up yourself, I want you guys to put that on the outside. <coughs> And then on each of those things on the outside, I want you to rank yourselves from one to 10. So can you do better? Are you the best that you can be? And then in the middle, not based on any of your ratings on the outside, but just how you view yourself, your own self-image, rank yourself from one to 10. Did anybody rank themselves out of 10? Yeah. Really? Good. So the point of the exercise is while everything on the outside can be a five, six, seven, whatever. We can all be better in some sort. Your own self-image in the middle should be a 10. You should be your own biggest fan. 
And it's not about being arrogant or conceited or anything like that. It's just having that confidence in yourself that you're going to achieve the end of your pipeline. It's just your own self-image. So, I can actually think. So we all know who Ed Milet is. Yes. Right? Okay. Um, do you know who Ed Milet is? Okay, I'm not sure. So in the book, he said, my friend and colleague Ed Milet moved from the bottom rung of his firm, moving right up to becoming one of its most powerful senior leaders. When I first met him, I was intrigued by his self-esteem. It almost filled the room. It didn't seem arrogant, but simply exuded confidence. The more I got to know Ed and more I realized that his confidence had come from the things he was able to discipline himself to do and the results he was experience, experiencing based on that discipline. During the more than 10 years that I've worked with Ed and others like him, my respect for them has grown as their self-respect has grown. The respect of people around them grows exponentially as their own confidence and self-esteem grows. Some people cross the line into arrogance, self-promotion, and even hubris. Guard against these and you, as you must personally accept the responsibility for your self-respect. No one can do it for you. No one can climb inside your head and change the way you think or act or the outcome of your life. So, I mean, we all know Ed for the most part. He doesn't come off arrogant or anything like that. That's why he's more appealing for us. And we do have an enormous amount of self-respect for him because of the way he carries himself. So he did say it came from self-discipline. His self, his self-respect came from his self-discipline. <coughs> so self-respect is a byproduct of self-discipline, a correction or regulation of oneself for the sake of improvement. What you do when no one's watching. So it's closing the gap between what you do and what you should do. So phrases that show what that you're about to do something that you probably shouldn't do is just this once, everyone's doing it, and no one will find out. So the biggest one is no one will find out. If you have those thoughts, you really probably shouldn't be doing it. Um, and champions get themselves to do, to do what they need to do even if they don't want to. Like, Let's be real, nobody's motivated all the time. Like none of none of the leaders, literally, none of the leaders, I don't care if you're in my life, you're not motivated all the time. It's the power to say, okay, I'm still gonna go through my habits and I'm still gonna do what I'm supposed to do and the motivation will come on the backside. Even if it's your best person quits on you or something charges back or something personal in your life sucks. <laughs> Like, we do all go through it. The champions are the ones who can push through it. So one thing I definitely want to touch on is undisciplined complacency. A day of being complacent is 100% a day that's wasted. So much time spent thinking about self-improvement with little implementation. Do you know why all these big people, whether it's Tony Robbins, you go to conventions, we go to Momentum Monday, um, Andy Frisella, like all these guys are willing to put, to literally give you an outline of, hey, this is what we do. Because 99.9% .9 of them aren't gonna implement this. So what's the point of reading the books or going to convention or doing all the things that we're supposed to be doing if we're not going to implement it? It makes us think about it, but if we're not putting the actions to it, that's where it comes in. Um, so, and I kind of went through that. Um, decision discipline, pushing our choices towards things that make us better. So even if it makes you uncomfortable, this business makes you uncomfortable. Like you wouldn't see me standing up here at the beginning. You wouldn't see me doing a one-on-one. -on -one. A KTP, I have a video of my first KTP or a audio. It's horrible. Like I'm super, super uncomfortable. I forced myself to break the floor. And I did it really, really, really fast the first time. And I forced myself to do recognition. And that was super uncomfortable and I didn't know how to get excited and fired up and the whole thing. That was awkward for me. But you do have to 
push yourself to be <coughs> uncomfortable in situations. Like I know, I remember CJ and Dwayne would go back and forth and just do the presentation over and over and over and over and over and over so they would feel comfortable doing it. I mean, it's kind of what you have to do. So when he finally did it, the first ones, awkward. It's always gonna be awkward. Um, but the second one, once the awkward one's out of the way, was so much better. Like, you only get better when you get uncomfortable. So, speaking of discipline, okay. So, you can't pick and choose on when you're gonna be coachable. You just have to be coachable. Like, showing up to pregame, that needs to be a thing, to show up to pregame on time. You don't just one day become a leader and say, okay, now I'm gonna show up to pregame. Like I remember when I was in, I was in college and I was working full time, I worked at a marketing firm and we could show up in yoga pants. We were just on the phone most of the time. But our manager always came in like dressed like us, just with a little more flair, because fun boy and amazing. But, and we'd be like, why are you always dressed up? Like you don't have to be dressed up. He goes, I'm dressing for the job I wanna have. Okay, act like the leader you're going to be so then you can become it. Um, so it's coming to pregames on time, being at every BPM, being at every moment to Monday, um, qualifying for Elite Academy. Elite Academy, guys, so you're gonna see there's Elite Academy, there's T3, which is run by Guillermo Haro. Um, is there anyone else in the higher, or is it just those group? Okay. Mike Bentoncourt. No, Mike Bentoncourt does his with um, Guillermo? With Guillermo. No. Yeah, he does T3 with them. Yeah. Well, so I don't know if you guys noticed, a lot of you guys were coming in as Elite mm -hmm. Academy was going, but at Momentum Mondays, the SMB belt, the EMB belt, the EBC belt, every month was taken by people in Elite Academy. Every single month. Like it wasn't even a competition. And they bring up three people to stand up there, and then they do the whole like drum roll, like, oh, well, and the MVP is Bob. And all three of the people standing up there were from Elite Academy. Like, it makes you level up your business. The graduates, I added it up before I came here. There was seven graduates. The graduates collectively in those three months made over $200,000. And that's literally just because they were running the class. And so I challenge you guys to go through Elite Academy and not be the people sitting in the back, like fight for the front. And fighting for the front means that you're booking appointments, you're out prospecting, you're making the calls, you're learning the one-on-one. -on -one. Like this is meant to make your business grow. And it's not like, oh, I'm, I'm an associate. Like, what are you gonna do? I went through it. I graduated as an associate. I spoke at Momentum Monday. And that was the most exhilarating, that I think that was even the first time I walked across the stage. But that was the most exhilarating feeling ever. And I thought I was gonna be so scared to speak on that stage. And afterwards I'm like, I wanna do this more. This is, this is kind of fun. Cause it's not like where you guys were asked to look you in the eyeball and look you in the eyeball and look you in the eyeball. There's so many people there that I can look in between each person's head and get a little more excited. Mm. Um, yeah, I made like a really bad like Tula Wana joke and yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> awkward. Um, and then the biggest one in my opinion is being a person of your word. So I'm not, that was a big one for me and it's still a hard one for me. Where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wake up in the morning, I'm gonna work out. <laughs> I didn't do that this morning. Like, <laughs> I, I eat pretty healthy, so that's not a hard one. But even like, like talking to my dad, he's like, hey, can you get this to me? Like, yeah, I'll get it to you by the end of the day. I forgot about it. Like, even like the simple little things of like, like Thomas is gonna tell me something and I know he's gonna follow up with it. I don't even have to question. All right, cool, Thomas, thanks. Like nobody has to stress about me. Like that's my goal. Um, so I want you to write down and identify the areas of your life that you need discipline and be honest with yourself. So where are the gaps in your life and how do you plan to close those gaps?
So the next one is desire. So your self-discipline is determined by the strength of your desire. You're gonna hold yourself to things if you want it bad enough, right? So the opposite of desire is apathy. So it's the absent or suppression of passion, emotion, or excitement. Do you guys know anyone like that? Have you ever felt like that? Probably. Um, unfocused desire can lead down destructive paths. If you're, if you don't have that desire, you're likely to sleep in all day. And I mean, I know those people where, you, or I have had those roommates where you leave for the day and then you come back and they're still sleeping. Like the wasted day. Um, or, I mean, I was actually looking at, somebody had posted a, a, not a meme, but a meme or something. And it was talking about how much it costs to go out. And. Oh, that was me. Was it you? Yeah, Gary Vee. Okay, well then it was Matt. But Matt posted something about how much it costs to go out. And at the end of the year, it ends up being. 22000 yeah, it's like a down payment for a house. Yeah, 22000 over the next 20 years, averaging about 7% of the S&P 500 was 120, uh, no, like a $1 million, $1 million uh, missed opportunity of, of saving investing money. Whoa. Well, and part of me was like, it had done it off of Friday and Saturday. Like, Sunday, I yeah. know people who go out Friday and Saturday. And ironically, last night I saw like, 10 Instagram stories of people taking a picture of a shot and saying bye. And I'm like, dang, and I'm like, then you wake up in the morning and it's like a wasted day and you go do it again. Like, there's so much more valuable time. Like, I don't miss it. It's not something that, I'm, like, there's no FOMO going on. Like, you're getting so much more value working your business, being productive with your day than, I mean, there's quite a few young amount of that. I mean, it honestly doesn't compare to what's possible here and what everyone else are just doing right now. Um, so, and words aren't enough, you have to see it. So when Matt's telling you to close your eyes and see it, like you have to see it. It can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, that, and the other, but I'm never, I don't know, kind of a figment of your imagination somewhere. Like that's what I should want. It's like, if you say like, I wanna be rich. Like, rich isn't connected to anything of character. So you're gonna make money and you're gonna go spend it on cars and depreciating assets and you're gonna be tied to material things. Like, you you don't wanna be rich, you wanna be wealthy and attribute it to something else. Like, I'm gonna be able to provide my family with the life that I didn't have. Um, or, Part, I mean, so we talk about our whys, like, what's your desire to want to be somebody? Like, I won't lie, that was the biggest thing when like going into business with Nick, and, like, he is somebody, he's made something of himself. But I had my separate goal of like, I want to be somebody. So like, that was a challenging thing for me. So it's like, what's your desire to want to make something of yourself? Um, so I mean, what is something that takes your breath away? Like, what are you passionate about? What do you want more than anything for you and your family or your future family? Like, what exactly do you want to achieve? And be honest with yourself, write it down.
So your desire is fueled by the clarity of your dreams and goals. So <coughs> those, those are things you write down like, hey, I'm going to be a great husband and father, and these are the actions I'm going to take to get there. And I'll show you an example right now. And here's the thing, right now you're going to say, I'm going to get to $100,000 a year. I'm going to get to $250,000 a year. I'm going to build, I'm going to be 12 Y and half of those are going to be 4D for whatever. And over the years, they're going to keep growing. Like you're going to say 100,000 right now. And then in five years from now, that's going to seem so small. Like it's going to be cute. Like, that, like that is your scope of your vision right now. And when you achieve it, once you achieve your goals, you don't go back under. You don't say, okay, well, my next goal is 50,000. No, my next goal is 250 or a million or 2 million. And if you've read Think and Grow Rich or, um, I mean, you hear people say it all the time, but they say, read your goals out loud every morning and every night, especially in this industry. You hear a lot of people say, every morning, every night, every morning and every night. How many people actually read their goals? Do you read it out loud? Yeah, I do. Really? Yeah. I feel you. So, and part of me, I felt silly. Like, I felt weird doing it. And especially like Nick's over there and I'm like trying to say it with confidence and I felt silly. But, so you know how like in movies, like old Hollywood movies, the cowboy has a revolver in there. It's like always on their, What's it called? Yeah, that thing. <laughs> so they always have their weapon close. This is your weapon. If you're at Wealthful, if you're on some trip somewhere, if you're wherever you are, however you're feeling, it's the worst day ever, the day that you really don't want to do it, that's the day you have to do it. Like every single day, no matter what. And I thought it was funny because when I'm like, oh, I felt awkward. Like saying my goals out loud, I kept reading the book. And he talks about how he went to a leadership retreat and he learned a powerful lesson about reading with passion. So if you read out loud, you read with all the confidence in the world. Like you're going to achieve this, this is gonna happen. Um, and he said, I was bunking with a couple of other business leaders. It was the end of the first day and I was in my bunk quietly reading my goals. I didn't want to disturb the others but I wasn't going to break the practice I had promised myself I would do. One of the men, Rich Stolley, who is one of the other co-founders of the company, a great friend and mentor to me, got out of his bunk and began to pace back and forth, reading his goals out loud with intense passion. I could only guess that he paced and read this way when he was, on his, when he was in his own home, and he wasn't going to compromise just because he was not at home on this night. Rich is a successful multimillionaire today, and I would venture to say that his success had a lot to do with his obvious focus and commitment to his dreams and goals. The experience inspired me and intensified my resolve to read my goals out loud with feeling. So, I mean, so many successful people say to do it, like why don't we just do it? <laughs> like, and even on the worst days, the best days, it just, you have the same habits, you know, that's what you need to do to focus your day. This is my focus today. Reminder, this is my focus today. I mean, we need reminders for everything else. Like, why don't we remind ourselves every day of why we're doing what we're doing? Especially when we work this business so quickly and everyone says no. Like, not everyone says no. But like, you get so many no's if you're working quickly. So, okay, cool. No, next. I'm like, I'm good. They, Rich Dolly had said at the retreat too, if you're worried about one person, it's because your team's not big enough. Mm -hmm. Like, if you are worried about this single person, even I actually came across a video of Nick in August 2009, it was right before he opened, he left Guillermo's office to open Temecula. And it's just facing him. So I can't, you can't see who he's talking to. And he's talking about like, we're gonna build this, like, and everyone, you can hear them and they're like really fired up, like, hell yeah, we are. And he does say, he's like, I have a good relationship with some of you guys. I know some of you guys, we don't have such a great relationship. Um, 
and I can't see everyone, so I'm like, kind of like, ouch. <laughs> and he's like, but honestly, I'm looking for the people who are going to pop their heads up. Like, you pop your head up, let's run. And whoever's taking the video turns, and it's this huge group. And I see Cynthia, and I see Adriana. You see Victor, HR. I see Victor, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. It's like super fuzzy, and I don't know everyone. Everyone looks a lot younger, too. But, <laughs> um, but you're really waiting for those people. Like, who's gonna pop their head up? And I think that has a, like, if you're serious about it, you're gonna say, okay, what do I need to do? Um, and then kind of be realistic. Like, you're like, I'm gonna make $500,000, awesome. Go make $500,000 a year. Go make half a million dollars a year. But what are the little goals that are gonna get you there? Because if you start from now, it seems so far away. So you have to have the little successes that are gonna get you there. So you can celebrate a little bit and like keep going. Celebrate a little bit and keep going, you know? Um, and then keep a log. So every new year, Ryan <laughs> says like he'll take four hours and look at all of his old goals and create a new one for the next year. So while everyone's getting ready to like go party or whatever, he's like, I'm sitting there making sure my goals are set because I'm not going to that new year not prepared. That's smart. So he has this whole binder of every year he's gonna do this and what his goals were. I think that was really cool. Um, so, oh, here's the, oh, the other one. Um, black. You can see the finance. Oh, you can see the black one. So, like, I am gonna be a millionaire before I turn 30. So, I need to build a business generating a monthly revenue stream of $83,000 to build my agency to 100 licensed associates by whatever date, make eight personal sales per month, make 200 agency sales per month, save $48,000. And family, be a committed husband and father. Keep, uh, keep the promise to court my wife with a weekly date night. Put her on a pedestal and treat her as the most beautiful person who has ever lived. Spend one hour each week with each child, mentoring and guiding them. Be patient, nurturing parent who always makes time for my family. So he reads that every single day. And he's actually said millionaire before I turned 26. Mm -hmm. But every single day, that's what he's reading to himself. Like, reminder, my wife is queen. <laughs> <coughs> and then vision. So the ability to clearly see the end state and then take each step with the end in mind. The most successful people get caught up in the grasp of a vision, one that inspires them to make the changes necessary for greatness, and others get caught up in the image of a vision. So how I said, I want to be rich, you're looking at the rich people with like the super, super nice cars and the really, really big houses, and you want the things. Like, you want wealth. Have you, have you guys ever read the book Mind Gym? Yes. So I had to read it for soccer, because I was gonna go play soccer in college, um, and last minute didn't. But the coach gave me Mind Gym, and it's all about picturing the game, or picturing the practice, picturing the move, picturing whatever, and your brain recognizes that as you doing it. Like if you were to close your eyes and imagine yourself running, your heart rate's gonna pick up as if you're running. Your mind thinks that's what's happening. So if you're tricking your mind, to, like this is where I belong and Ed Milet says that too he says every once in a while we'll go to dinner at a really really nice place and I trick my mind into this is where I belong and we've done that too where we're gonna go out and look at multi-million dollar homes and walk through the open house and like we're here looking we're gonna buy you know um, or go test drive new cars I know Caitlin Jane she's under Eric Olson she hit 500,000 when she was 25 years old. And Eric had taken his top people to go drive dream cars. And she's like, that sold me the vision. Like, like I can achieve this. And she was only, I think she was 22 at the time. Um, and your vision should not be connected to your current financial situation. If you're living at home and you're like, I'm gonna move out. <laughs> like, okay, think bigger than that. Like. What 
that will happen eventually. What's the big goal? Um, so a narrow vision restricts, hold, restricts and holds people back and robs them of their hopes and dreams. Gaining a broad vision and exercising your ability to constantly stretch your vision takes a tremendous amount of effort. It's easier to stay in your comfort zone, our jobs, and let a year, a decade, or a life go by without <coughs> testing or stretching our vision. I was telling Nick, <coughs> I was like, the one thing that I can, I can give a lot to WFG and what it's done for me, but the biggest thing is it's stretched my vision more than I've ever imagined. Like if I left, which I would never do, but if I left and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, I don't know, like my mom owns a promotional services, from promotional marketing services company. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go run that with my mom. There's not as much income or lifestyle or any traveling or anything like that in a different company. Like you would always wonder what if, and everything would always seem so small. Like, okay, you're gonna leave this to make $50,000 a year. Well, you know it could have been possible for you to make $500,000 a year and like help people and have freedom of time. And like, who <coughs> thought that would, I, nobody taught me that was possible. Even as like an entrepreneur, like my parents had no time at all. Like, they, my mom is a workaholic, 100%. She's done well for herself, she's ran businesses, but she doesn't have the lifestyle aspect. She doesn't make as much money as we do, mate. Like, there's nothing out there as good as this at all. Um, so in order to make necessary changes, you really have to look at yourself and your habits, your relationships or roadblocks, like see what's keeping you from your goal. Like Adam Mockett, there's a video, and he's saying if your boyfriend, your girlfriend is not supportive, and he pauses and he's like, get out, like, get out. <laughs> like if you're married, I mean, don't, I'm not trying to cause any divorces, but like, it's just your boyfriend, girlfriend, get out. Like you need that supportive person. There's there's so many people who are gonna stand in your way and they think they're doing the right thing for you. Like, or some people do. But like you're if I'm Thomas's parent, he wants to go start a company, I'm like, oh honey, that's not what if you don't succeed? Like I don't want him to fail. Like, why don't you go the safe route? You can be a teacher. Teachers have pensions. Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, like, luckily, I mean, in my case, my parents were entrepreneurs, and like, you'd be stupid not to do this. Like, it's all set up for you, you just have to run it. <laughs> like, um, my dad tries to make a point of, he doesn't want to like steal my thunder, which I wouldn't care if he wants to be my business partner, please, come on. Um, and he tries to make a point of like, how easy this business could be, I'm like, yeah, well, Okay then, that'd be awesome. And my mom just <coughs> hit me with, cause I said I wanted to open an office in the South Bay, like, but it's really hard the going back and forth. She goes, oh, if you open an office in the South Bay, I help. So eventually they all start seeing. Um, and I mean, and everyone has their own season. So the people who tell you no right now, don't write them off. Like they just don't have the vision yet. They don't see it. And you can't blame people for something that they don't see. How Nick said, if they don't show up, no, well, they don't know what they're not showing up to. They have no idea. So what's funny is <coughs> even before the what's impossible, the Alice in Wonderland, I had written like, your phone, air conditioning, lights, a microwave, a jet, like those were all impossible. So they all came from somebody's vision though. Oh, and then there could be two. There are two of you. There's the one that is and the one that could be. And that's an Ed Milet thing too. And at the end of his life, he's gonna meet who he could have been and his goal is that he's identical, that it's not a stranger, right? <coughs> and then your vision comes from your faith. So it's a firm belief in something for which there's no proof. 
yourself and your dreams sets the foundation for everything else. And if you have faith in everything you do before you do it. Like, you got in your car and you drove here and you had faith that you were gonna make it here in one piece. You have faith that you're gonna make it home. You still get in the car and you go. You have faith that you're gonna make it, right? So, you don't have to think of it as something so difficult. It's small. Like, there's not a $100,000 ring on your finger. There's no proof yet. But you have to have faith in that you, it can be proof that you can achieve it. And faith is a two-way street. So you have to, you have to have faith in yourself and leadership has that faith in you. So if we have faith in you, but you don't have faith in yourself, it doesn't work that way. If, I mean, I needed that. When I was in Yuri's office, I think maybe I was doubting myself a little bit. I was getting a little frustrated and I walked into his office and I was more willing to do something for somebody else than I was for myself at that moment. Sometimes that's just what it is. I'm willing to do this to retire my mom rather than be <coughs> for myself, etc. But I walked into Yuri's office and I remember Austin Gabor was brand new and he was sitting in his office <coughs> and like, hey, when you have a moment, like, can we talk? And he's like, we can talk now. I was like, okay. I was like, so, Tell me when you need me to hit SMB by. Like, tell me a date. And he starts laughing and he's like, and he said, You're the best person in this office when you believe it. And I literally think about that like every other day. Like, you are the best person when you believe it. If you believe it. If you don't, then he had faith in me and I didn't. And I doubt this is something he was thinking about. Like, one day I'll tell him. But I doubt this is something that was even going through his head when he said it. Um, I can't read it. Sustained acts of faith can change our life and set the stage for a highly pressurized pipeline. Faith is only faith until it is achieved, then it translates to knowledge. So, if you pack enough faith into this pipeline, because now it goes forward. So you have your faith creates your vision. You have faith in your vision. Your vision and how big your vision is creates your dreams and goals. Your dreams and goals create your desire. So how badly you want to achieve those dreams and goals. Your desire filters into your self-discipline. How bad do you want it and what discipline are you willing to have to achieve it? And your self-discipline translates into your self-respect. and what comes out on the back end is whatever you put. You're, I mean, when I was going through this, I realized how many gaps there were. I mean, he goes through the five Fs, so <coughs> faith, family, finances, <coughs> fitness. That's money, home, five, or four Fs. Um, and I realized how many gaps there were in where I didn't know what I wanted. And I spent hours going through it. like. Like, I encourage you guys to sit there with your notes and try to figure out each piece of it. Because you do truly end up seeing where those gaps are. What you're, where you're missing. Um, and even Rich Dolly kind of has something like this, but for each part of the business. Like, well, if you're missing one of these, then the whole thing is thrown off. You're off balance. It doesn't work. So that way you can go backwards and you're like, if this, this isn't working, like, why isn't this working? And you go backwards, like, I'm missing this. I'm missing that. This is what I need to do. So, I want you guys to know that we believe in you guys, but it has to be coming from you guys. Like, we can only pull so much, right? Like, like if you're willing to put in the work, like, we'll drag you across that finish line. Like, what's your goal? It, this is what we have to hit. Um, I know with a small example, but like Zach wanted to hit his 3330, best believe I bug him every single day. Like, what number have you got? Who's coming in? Who can I call? Who do we sit down with? Who is this and that? And it was probably really annoying, but I made sure I dragged him across that finish line on the last day, it would probably be the last hour that it would count for that day. So if you're willing to put yourself out there and hey, this is what's 
this is what I want, we'll get you there. But the discipline has to come from you guys first. Um, but I think I just hit noon. But I do want you guys to qualify for a lead academy. Fight for the front there. Really take it in for all it is. Walk in with a detailed business plan and your business will explode in those 90 days of the 90 day madman run. So walk in with this done. I mean, if you want feedback and you want to come to Nick or myself and say, hey, like, this is what I got, should I, I'm, I don't know about this part, I need to fill in this gap, how does this look? Feel free. And at least we know where you want to go. And like I said, we'll start driving. Um, but other than that, that is all I have for you guys. I hope you got some value. Yes. But yeah, let's rock and roll. Thank you.